I'm, I'm Heidi and my business and I'm also known as the Chuki Hand and I, I like to flake out, flake the freak out with metal flake. Um, pretty much anything creative, badges especially, um, but there are no holds barred. So there's a story to the Chuki Hand. Um, there used to be this terrible TV show called Toddlers and Tierras. And there was this poor girl that was a pageant kid and her parents would, they were on her all the time. And every time she got to the pageant, she would get on stage and she'd freeze and she would do this. And they said that she was doing the chooky hand. And I figured like half my life, that's all I do. I just show up kind of awkward and I'm like, so I'm the chooky hand. Ah, so that was the first incarnation. Uh, so back in the I would say early 2000s, I opened up a small hot rod shop. I was a sign maker and my specialty was vehicles. So I painted custom airbrushing, pinstriping, trucks, uh, you name it. Uh, and it was, a, it was a good run, but a lot of the work I did was fire trucks and restorations with gold leaf. And I used a lot of Enron paint and I did not wear a respirator. So yeah, I learned a lot of lessons and um, I had a lot of neurotoxicity they were gonna take me off the planet actually they were gonna they were like I couldn't speak a full sentence um, so I got out of the industry back then and went into nursing and that's like that's that's just an awful career I just can't do it anymore so I'm I'm back and safer with the plastics and the fumes and yeah You know, I, it's just been like a constant, like it's a lifestyle for me. Like I've always just mixed in, you know, this culture. Uh, like back in long ago and far away, like I was in a, a, ba a rockabilly band and you know, it's always been an infusion like in my eye gate. So I'm always building, making, creating. So my style would lend itself to whatever job I was doing. What rockabilly band were you in? It was called Thrillsville. Is that a Philly based band? It was uh, Frederick, Maryland, but we were DC, Baltimore area, okay. yeah. I design and create from scratch. Now I have the existing, you know, badge stock, but I replicate it exactly. So say somebody wants their 1978 Econo line to be on point, but in flake, I got you. Oh learning uh, new equipment and material waste. Like I, I really had to figure things out and I would have stacks of fails on the daily basis. And I'm like, what am I doing? I'm absolutely insane. And, but I had this passion, this thing just, just keeps driving, driving, driving. So like, like many people say, the only way out is through. Yeah, so when, you, when you're in it, you just gotta keep, keep going. Sure, like uh, a lot of the work that I really dig doing is uh, vanners especially, you know, like it's branding, you know, it's branding their van. So they'll talk to me a little bit, say about what the name of the van is or, you know, the theme or where it's come from. And then just out of nowhere, it's almost like a channeling now, uh, you know, the images come through. So I like to get out of people colors, color choice. Um, is there anything specific story to it? And then from there, I just, I just kind of rip and something comes out. Uh, I use acrylics, uh, epoxies, sometimes I'll cast a mold, uh, but typically metal flake and pearl is definitely my jam. I'll accent with solids, but I'd like to flake the world. It's cut through um, laser cut, sometimes hand cut and polished. It all depends. Like if I'm building a shifter knob, I'm going to stack it and bake it, and then I'm going to sand it. Um, so same kind of process, but I can't use a machine really for that. Oh, like a bigger job would be like, 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 that. like that behind me. That, um, that was straight surrender. Like I just, that was like... I think I was up for maybe 24 hours once I got it. And so what I like to do is, like here, like we have all these angles, um, like I'll come in with a paper pattern and then I'll trace all the angles and then I'll transfer them and then I'll keep dummying out patterns in cardboard until I get that angle just right. 
and then once I get the math down, then I can really fly and get it all into balance. And then this, this centerpiece was so awesome. I have no idea where this came from, but it just happened. And I was like, I had this image in my head and I was like, well, first off, I want metal flake blood, of course, why not? And then, but I was like, I wanted the depth of the image in it. So I just kept working with really expensive, you know, material until I got the, you know, 3D effect out of it. And then, of course, then I can't do any. I have to level it up. I was like, well, I have to add some motion to the sand. So then I engraved in like sand motion. And I always like to take it to the limit, take it to the next level on all things. So if I can add a touch, it's going to get it. Passionate freaks like myself. Yeah. So anybody who's really into their vehicle or their project or something like that. Yeah, they're willing also to go that extra mile. Huh. Side of a truck. Yeah, a tractor trailer. And that was an interesting, um, that, that material wise and planning and measuring, that was an interesting project, but it turned out great. It ended up, it was a blast. And I've got one coming up in the future too. We we're discussing a, Full mosaic down the side of a, a low rider and I can't wait like I really want to dive into that that'll probably be my next big project work. totally inlay work so you get all that pop and depth and you can layer it and yeah so it's like a I don't know like a tangible mural well there was a van called the disco dust bunny and that I, that, I don't know, the whole thing from beginning to end is my friend Justin painted it and, and it just came in cohesively. So I made the badges for it, but it was just fun to see the whole, like the humor behind the name. And then of course this like, you know, totally vamped out 70s van that went along with it, so. Um, I would like to build a trike with a coach body that is like rolling clouds so that when you're seated in it it looks like uh, you know a rolling chariot and I haven't figured out how yet to am I gonna do frame and then do transparent inserts so we have multi-layered like almost like psychedelic clouds or is it gonna be a formed fiberglass body and I struggle with the non-art side too. One of my biggest things that I've learned is even with friends, they're like, hey, can you draft that up for me? Or hey, can you do a design? I take a deposit, absolutely. You know, I don't proof anything anymore without a deposit um, because sometimes it, it, well, you just wasted your time when you could be focused on, like I could be prototyping something new. So I'm honoring myself in that space now. Oh my God, that is like, that's my, that's my heart. That's my custom crush. Um, last year, um, I spent the year of COVID building a sculpture in my backyard. And I realized at the end of it, I really needed to learn how to weld and work with metal. So I committed to that. I took a welding class and then all of a sudden his metal class came up and I was like, why not learn from the master, you know? So I hopped on a plane and I went out to California and I just ran into an entire room full of family. And he's just, and he just drew me in. He was like, no, 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 come here. You know, no, 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 you're gonna work on the English wheel. And from there, I've been out a couple times since then. And you know, he's just, he's an amazing inspiration. And he'll call once in a while and he'll say, I wanna make sure you're staying inspired. Right. Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, I, I just couldn't believe it. Like, reach out. I, I would tell anybody, reach out to these, you know, big guys. They, you know, they're so happy to be like, well, here, you should do this. You know, any question you have, just ask. Don't be afraid. Right. And when last year when I went, like, I, I looked at his age and it was, and I was like, you know, I don't know how much longer. I, yeah, he'll probably be here forever um, to learn from somebody like that and to go through all that years of history. Oh, my God, please, you know, fill my brain. Yeah. Well, we did some letting, which isn't done anymore. And really it was neat to see how he works metal with these crazy implements that he's built out of weird stuff that he found in the yard and it makes it work. 
and then part of it for me I always thought metal was about like just like banging and smashing into things and by the end of the evening um, my friend Rose rolled in she's a uh, custom Vanner magazine and she brought it all together for me and we're romancing the molecule of the metal we're pushing it to the edges and bending it and once that happened I was like ah, oh, metal makes sense Yeah, I'd like to combine both. I would like to be able to build some larger sculptures, but have those hinted accents of pops of color all throughout. Yeah, yeah. sounds really cool. Yeah, I can't wait. I prefer that because that's my heart. Yeah. And yeah, like I, I went for so many years like not having a shop anymore and I still showed up at all the events, but now I'm like, I feel better being back with an offering. I get to play in the sandbox again. Yeah, so, but if I do metal, I'd like to do maybe something at public square, you know, do some public art. That's mostly, you know, what I do. I haven't done a big vending event, but, and I'll be honest, like I freak out beforehand and I'm like, what am I going to make? What am I going to bring? And then I would spend, you know, all that time building something and packing it. And so I do travel a lot, but usually I just go hang out, meet people. Yeah, learn and hang. Uh, I would like to see it in a bigger, much bigger space, but uh, a collaborative space. I'd love to be in with, you know, a shop full of builders. And this is my weird corner of that car build. Um, you know, like I come in in the end and maybe I'm doing, you know, custom pearl dashboard stuff. Um, yeah, I'd like to be in with other artists collectively. Well, somewhere in between all of it, that's why I'm looking at leaving this area and I'm trying to figure out how can I go six months out there and maybe, you know, a couple months in Texas. I have a couple projects already set up down there. So I need to be mobile and the only way to do it is to let go of, you know, the space. It's a little scary, but I know the returns are going to be great because I'm just going to be in the middle of, you know, the creator jam. No, 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 that's a hard one because everything inspires me. Like I can see a shadow on the ground and that inspires me. But so many of the greats, like like you have Gene Winfield or, you know, Ian Russell and uh, Voodoo Larry's work inspires me too. There's so many people out there. Um, everything inspires me. I'm just grateful to see everybody still in it, still growing. I like the people that continue to grow and learn. And I have this amazing community of friends that have been so supportive over the past few years that anytime there's a place for me to go somewhere, they're like, we got you. We got the cats, don't worry about it. Go, go shine. So like, I'm just, I'm surrounded by a lot of love and it's awesome. Uh, okay, there's some inspiration there too. Um, there's so many amazing women in the custom industry. Uh, you have Rose with Custom Vanner Magazine, probably one of the most talented fabricators I've ever seen. Um, I just keep encountering more and more, like I'm looking forward to a project with, you know, Colette Marie down in Texas and fabricating on her build and we're, we're an army that's not going anywhere and, you know, we're getting in and we're getting dirty, you know. You know, we may dress up, but we're definitely getting, you know, sleeves rolled up and in the middle of it all. Lots of inspiration there. Um, to launch, you know, people don't, don't be an armchair philosopher, you know, be a hands-on, roll your sleeves up, get in it and do it because it opens doors and it opens new creation cycles and yeah, don't sit still. Cool.